<laughs> okay, let's press. So we can we can start. <coughs> I, I want to want to start my presentation now. Where's my presentation? Can you read that? References to external pictures have been blocked. If you choose to enable this content, you may. I uh, don't. I don't see that. You may be loading content from remote locations, uh, which presents a security risk. Do not enable this content unless you trust the source of this file. Warning, this document references pictures in untrusted locations. These references have been blocked. What am I supposed to do here now? Okay. <laughs> Isn't this dangerous? Okay, guys, we will talk about this kind of thing today. So, yeah. how much how much time does <coughs> this take us now before we start the presentation? One minute, two minutes? Okay, click OK. There it is. Yes, we will talk about messages, soft performance and messages. Uh, before we start, let me and tell me who I am. They didn't tell you who I am. Uh, I'm. Dimitar Simov, everybody calls me Jimmy, so yes, please call me Jimmy. I'm in this uh, business of uh, software development uh, since 1996-7, so not 20 years yet, but close to that. Uh, my job is uh, to make software easy to use. That's uh, the brief thing. I've done uh, yeah, quality assurance, I've done technical writing, I've done interface design, interaction design, usability testing, and I still do many of those things. So usability, user experience, this is my main domain of expertise. And as I mentioned today, uh, the topic is soft performance, but uh, we're not talking soft performance in general, but the specific uh, sub parts of it, and the, I'll tell you in a minute what that is. First, uh, let me remind you what performance is. So the Google, Google definition gives two definitions. Uh, one of them is that performance is a task or operation in terms of how successfully something is performed or that task is performed. And the other one is the capabilities of a machine, <coughs> product, or vehicle. So I guess in most of our lives uh, or your lives, what you guys do, you're, you're interested in uh, software performance in the second sense, right? Uh, you're evaluating the performance of uh, the software in terms of uh, how quickly it can run, how many operations it can perform in a second, how many users it can serve uh, in a second, and so on and so on. Well, I'm interested in the first part of it. <coughs> I'm interested in performance from the point of view of people. Now, I won't, well, I will remind you, how many of you were here at the last year at ISTA? Oh, thank you for coming back. Good. So you, you will know that it will be very easy for you. For those who are new, then uh, you will get uh, catch up with, uh, with the rest. Uh, we talked last year that uh, soft performance, this is the, the human side of performance, and it is uh, dependent on many things, and some of the most important is how uh, things are formatted, how things are also, uh, how, oh, if it's slow. Now that's that's difficult. Anybody remember what that was? Yeah, tell us, please. Uh, okay, it's, it's about uh, the probability of uh, clicking object is uh, time connected to its size. Yes. Yeah. To put it, yeah, you know, more common terms, it's the time to click an object depends on the size of the object and the distance to the object. So something that is very close to where the mouse is and uh, something that's big, it's very quick to click. So make the buttons big. Uh, okay, the outer structure, how things are put on the, on the screen, uh, what defaults you use, that these uh, influence how fast, uh, how well people can perform software. Success and engagement, 
people who succeed in their task, they perform well. Uh, people who are engaged, they don't uh, have a sense of lost time. They, they also perform well. How we present progress uh, is very important for performance. People, uh, we people consider uh, progress indicators that speed up to show uh, things that are shown through progress indicators that speed up at the end as performing faster. Strange. Right? Aesthetics, beautiful things are easier to, to, to perform it. Yeah, we are better. We perform really better with things that we like. Strange. But anyway, now, I want to tell you a story before uh, we delve into all this. I work at SAP. Uh, there we have this nice social tool um, in which people communicate all kinds of things. Now, uh, I participate in different groups that communicate on different topics. So I decided uh, to start a new group for the Sublabs Bulgaria here. And I, yeah, this is the form for creating a new group and I filled out the form. Uh, no, I haven't filled it up here, but now I have filled it out. And I decided, okay, I will activate the group and uh, yeah, here's the, how you activate the group. What I did, I clicked, great, what happened? A group was created, okay? Not really. I got this error. The description you entered is too large. Please limit yourself to 255 characters. Limit myself? <laughs> I didn't have many options, you see, right? I had to do, okay, okay. I clicked it. This is what happened. <laughs> Where's my group? <laughs> no, no, it's nowhere. It's gone. Absolutely. No, no trace. Yeah, this is a message, right? Okay, so what I'm going to talk today is about messaging. We do that all the time. All the software gives messages all the time to us users. And whether this is good, whether this is bad, how we perceive these messages, do we understand them, what we do after, see, uh, after we see those messages. All this defines how well we perform with the software. So messages are extremely important. Communication, this is the way we as developers communicate to us users. So messages are very, very important. Now, I will not give you recipes. I will give you some guidance. But I want it to be practical when thinking or writing messages or testing for messages. Don't expect me to give you the um, solution to messaging. Disclaimer, I do not like to write messages. Unfortunately, I do it a lot. <laughs> so let's have a look at what the message is like or what's in a message. First thing, there is some sign. I guess you recognize this, right? This is a critical thing. Yes, something serious happened. Or this is uh, information. Yes, we want to tell, let you know something. And this is warning. Different types of messages, right? And the sign indicates the type of message. Good. So what, this is one of the elements. This is optional. Not all messages have signs. Now, the next one is text. The text of the message says four things. First is you have, as a user, you have to know who gives you this message. Think of an operation operating system. There are at least 200 services running there, 20 programs, and the message comes out. How do you know which of those is giving the message? So there should be something that says, uh -huh, this is the program. The message should also tell you what happened or what will happen or what did not happen. So you know why it's coming out. Then it should tell you why. So you have a sense of, aha, I made this mistake or I forgot that or something. And then it should tell you what users can do or you, what you can do about that. How you can avoid that in the future or how you can solve for what information additional you have to provide and so on. And there is some closing, usually a button, right? There are messages without closings. And this is just a list of some of the most popular closing. There are many other options. Now, here's another story. You like those, don't you? 
Twitter, yeah, this happened to me last year. I installed that on my mobile. I filled out my information and there is this checkbox, upload my address book to connect me with my friends. I installed this on my phone, on my mobile. And in my address book, there are like several hundred people. My mother, uh, like my brother and sister probably, my uh, house repair people, the car repair. I don't want these people on Twitter following me. No, so I, I, I didn't, I checked that off, cleared the checkbox. And I click sign in. And this is what happens. And now they tell me, since you unchecked the box, huh? I unchecked some box. Okay, maybe that's the checkbox previously. You may not see as many friends below. Friends? These are my friends. I don't know who Agent X is or I'm at the queue. No. 48 people in Twitter. Oh, just go follow them. Messaging, right? Yeah. You uncheck the box. I didn't follow those. Now let's get to the, to the core of this. I classify messages. I, I collect messages. I like that. And I give them yeah, categories and I'll present most, the most uh, prominent categories now. There are messages we mentioned already, warnings, right? This is a warning. Fail to load C program whatever pure XML. Okay, what am I supposed to do here? I don't know. Is it bad to have this message? Normal message, right? Yeah, fail to load something. Good. Then you should know that. Well, this happens every time I start Windows. Every time I start Windows. And I, I forgot to tell you, for each of these, I will suggest a way to fix similar messages. Well, the fix to this is don't show me. I don't care. As long as uh, my plant running thing works, I don't care. Or if I have to take some action, tell me. Give me a button, delete, or do configure something, or do something. Otherwise, this is message is totally useless. There are also critical messages. Here's an example. Snagit 10 whatever could not start. OK. Guess when this appears? When you start Windows, every time. <laughs> and again, what, what can I do here? Okay. And this, is, this, every, this adds every time some time, some lag when, to my Windows starting time, which is not instantaneous anyway. So what's the fix? Well, give me an option to remove that from the startup list. Or allow me to reinstall it, something. Okay, okay, now that's the... There are also validation messages. I'm sure you, you've seen those. Here's, it. Here's an example. I'm uh, entering, uh, yeah, I want to pay something. This is my credit card number. Please don't use it. <laughs> and I entered my credit card number and it says enter a valid credit card number. This is exactly what it's written on my credit card. What's the problem here? Spaces. Yeah, lazy developers. <laughs> Why the hell would that be invalid? Because the database integrity does not allow to have spaces there. Well, then parse the input and crop the spaces and take the, the, the values only. That's easy. Well, not only spaces, could be dashes, could be dots, could be whatever. Phone number, same thing. Okay, other messages. Confirmation, that's good. <laughs> well, well, what's funny about it? You don't like it, I know. Well, I'll translate it for you. Your electronic signature is valid. You can sign uh, money transfers now. <laughs> oh, that's a good way to say it, right? <laughs> oh, how, do, how do you fix that? That's easy, right? That there are informative messages. Very, very nice messages. Beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> Scheduled maintenance notification. Something service, some service will not be available. Oh, good. Oh, that's nice to tell me, right? 
That's good. But then look at this. When will this be? Can you figure it out? <laughs> 3 a.m. IST. <laughs> uh, okay, that, uh, yeah, oh, 3 a.m., that must be at night. I usually sleep at that time. <laughs> and IST, what, what, what the hell is IST? I don't know. Well, how do you fix this? State that the out time is at night. Tell me, tell it in my time zone so I can be aware of that. Probably this IST means that uh, that's probably somewhere in the United States. So when there it's uh, 3 a.m., it's uh, not that late or that early here in Bulgaria. Okay, there are messages that show up as you type. Here's one of these. I, GitHub is very popular, developer stuff. So I was like, yeah, let me go there too. I should be there. It's very fancy. And I start typing and it shows username may only contain alphanumeric characters or dashes and cannot begin with a dash. I haven't started with a dash and I have only alphanumeric characters there. Oh, they did not expect you really, didn't they? Yeah. So, yeah. Otherwise, this is a very useful way of uh, presenting information to users, right? But you have to, you have to know more. So there are other messages. Now, now it's getting very interesting. There is this type of messages that are, I call them guess what. So here's the next one. It says, uh, this is coming from po Mobi Pocket Reader. This is, uh, this is something before Kindle. There was this uh, uh, pro software program you download and you read books on that. And when you start that, it says, uh, well, the currently configured library location is not reachable and it tells me some path where that library is supposed to be. And do you want to start the reader using the default location? Uh, what, 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 what should I do here? Yes or no? Well, guess what? No, that's a, you can click either of this. You know, if you click yes, the program will start. If you click no, the program will not start. I did not expect that. I expected that it will start without using the default location, but it will still start. So, yes, think about that. If, if you have similar cases, that's very possible. Each program needs to have some default location, some library, some storage, whatever. Well, if, if that's lost, well, give me a chance to point to another location that uh, this should be. Okay. Um, numbered messages. I'm sure you have seen these. This is one of these. The installer encountered error four. Great. I hope I don't encounter any more of these. <laughs> Mumbo number five. Uh, well, <laughs> it's no brainer. You don't have to show these messages that are I call another time. Now, so here, here's one of these. This is another thing. And you, you understand what it says, right? Dust of, uh, access is blocked. Reason 34, please call. Now, this is the translation in English, yes. Please call the Eurobank officer who serves you. Okay? Yeah, yeah. And it, this is serious stuff, right? Your access is blocked. Why would my access be blocked? Because maybe somebody tried to tamper with my account, and this is my bank account. So that's serious stuff. And, it, well, this is the translation in human language. You're accessing the website outside the business hours of the bank. That's reason number 34. <laughs> that's, that's stupid. <laughs> well, fix the site. Should be working 24 7. That's a website, for God's sake. Or at least tell me, yeah, this is outside business hours. Log in uh, between 8 and uh, 5 or whatever the business hours are. Well, if there are Messages that are another time, there are also messages that are another place. <laughs> I'm serious. Here's one of these. You're accessing MySpace come from a location that is not authorized to view our licensed videos. Perhaps, please go to the United States. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm catching the plane to go browse your, uh, MySpace. Yeah? Give me a link to the travel site. Book my ticket. <laughs> um, let's calm 
calm down. Now, now there are those that, that make me think. Now, thinking is good. Now, there's one of these. I'll read it for you. Error importing FW 5.1. Value of 14 is not valid for value. Value should be between minimum and maximum. Parameter name value. <laughs> Okay. Oh, cancel. What happens if I click cancel? At least there is this don't show again. <laughs> no. This is this is a good one. Well, actually, it's a very valid message if you think of that's why that why it's called think a lot. If you think a lot, you you recognize that value. This is the value that you entered in the field that is named value. So this is some testing case, right? And that's why it says, well, the, the name of the field, the field value should contain something between, okay, minimum and maximum. This is strange, you know. It's, it's possible that somebody entered in the database minimum and maximum, so that, that's really what uh, the field ex expects. But uh, anyway, there should be a number here and a number there. Um, <coughs> yes, these are hard. Uh, okay, well, there, there, there are also messages that make me stop thinking. Uh, that's, that, 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 unfortunately, yeah, here's one. So I, I, I have no idea what, what's happening here. I don't know what the drive not really. Maybe this is something that helps me a bit to drive. I don't know what the drive is, but anyway. No idea what to do here. So if you see one of those, we'll just... Uh, there are also messages that come in, in, uh, in bunches and groups, packs. You know, that, that's an example. Um, it says, an unusual error occurred, not enough storage. Oh, okay, that happens. So I click OK. And this comes at the top that says, an unusual error, no scroll bars. <laughs> oh, well, that's strange now. Well, so why? Why would scroll bars matter? But I don't know. Anyway, and I click OK. <laughs> and there's one more on top, but now this is, that is catastrophic failure. <laughs> <laughs> and now when you click OK, that gone. Everything's gone. No software is not there. Windows is, is gone. Everything is disappeared catastrophically. <laughs> now you fix those. I don't know. You, Fix that code. Yeah, you should be able to. Your, your software should be able to work when there are no scroll bars, right? <laughs> there are also schizophrenic <laughs> messages. Uh, they don't know what they want to tell you. It's just like this is yeah, Windows location is not available. Whatever fo file folder is not accessible. Access is denied. So, well, you see, you see, there are three things here. Is it not available? Is it not accessible? Or is access denied? <laughs> or maybe it's all three. Or maybe access is denied because something is not accessible because it's not available. <laughs> I don't know. But this is, yeah, it happens a lot. Plain words would be much better here. Yeah? Here's my try on this. I would appreciate something like that. You may have no permissions to view the content of this folder, whatever the folder. Or it may be on some other computer that you're not currently connected to. So check your connection or ask somebody to give you permissions. That's what you should do in these cases, right? But no, no, they won't give me this. Access is denied. Slap you in the face. Okay. There are useless messages. Now that this is, think about it. They give you a message and it's useless. <coughs> Ah, do you remember that in the beginning? References to external pictures have been blocked. There is dangerous content. And what, what can I do about it? I can click OK. It's useless. It doesn't help me a bit. What can I do? Tell me which these references are so I can go there, check them, and decide whether these are dangerous or not. OK. Uh, this is a relative of the useless, unnecessary messages. Uh, think of a web browser. You edit something, type something, click save, and you get the message. The page will be reloaded for the <coughs> effect. 
why would the browser tell me that it will reload the page? Just reload the page. I'm in the in a browser, that's internet, you expect that to happen, right? Unless there is something very serious with that reloading, it will take a uh, yeah, couple of months, so yeah, you should go on vacation. And I'm sure you know this, in progress, right? You know that something is going on and you see a progress message, right? I bet you haven't seen this one. I oh, know, this one you have, sorry. Um, you have seen that, right? Sending. Google is sending. Perfect message. You can continue doing whatever you're doing and it doesn't obstruct anything. It's just there for you. You see, sending, send, gone. That's nothing to fix here. That's, that's a good message. Now, uh -huh. this one is you haven't seen. Now it says, please wait while the installation completes. <laughs> so far, good. But then, oh, do not click this. Uh, okay. <laughs> shall, shall I click OK? Shall I not? <laughs> no, no, do not click OK. Do you, do, you, do you have these messages? Do you, do you offer them in your software? <coughs> oh, you, see, you know how progress indicators work, so that's use a progress indicator. Now, predictive messages, these are good guys. They help you. It's a, this is some complex software search. You, you build some filter, and this, look at the message. <coughs> it says the filter will return one item. Ah, oh, that's good. It's got, uh, before I actually perform the search, it tells me that they, these criteria will bring one item, or 10 items, or 10,000. And it can help me decide whether to perform really the search. Do I need to see 10,000 items, or will only that one item be enough? And so I can fiddle with the, with the criteria. That's good. Uh, discussing the um, dialog box itself is another matter. So we're just looking at the message here. Okay, so that, that's a good one, no fix needed here. There are also preventive messages, right? These were predictive, now these are preventive. They, they prevent you from making some error or mistakes or something. So this is the JetBlue Air Airways website. I don't know how much you see, but uh, yeah, this is, uh, I'm traveling somewhere or just picking uh, fly out and fly in on the same date. And when you click uh, find tickets and the site says, oh, your return date is the same as your departure date. Is this intentional? And that's good, right? You may have, you made a mistake. Obviously made a mistake. You don't want to go from here to Washington and come back on the same day. It must be crazy or you must be in the military. So that's a good thing. Now, you don't fix that. <coughs> or the thing that you might want to fix is to make this non model. But still, this is a good message. Now, a few years later, Jet Back, uh, Jet Blue um, redesigned their website. You still, you still have the same, uh, not the same. Well, you still enter your dates for flying, and I, now there's a uh, same. But again, I'm using the same dates, and I'm finding my ticket. And now this is what happens. Your return date is the same as your same message, right? Now it's not in a pop-up, but do you see a problem here? You don't see the dates. So in fact, they did not improve anything. They make it wor made it worse. Besides, what happens if you could cancel? Well, okay. And you cancel, you get back. Okay, you continue. This message. They can keep that message, but at least must be transparent so you can see the dates. Or they can show me the dates, something. But now, now it's, it's not good. Oh, caps lock. Anybody who has uh, seen the caps lock message? Caps lock. Caps lock is on. Caps lock. What, what's the problem with caps lock? Where is there a problem with it? There is. Um, so what is the story about caps lock? It came from typewriters, those machines with <coughs> there it was difficult to press shift, press the capital letter, so it 
was a lot of effort, so they invented the caps lock, so you can you can lift the entire keyboard and type only in capitals. Computers came as a yeah, they inherited uh, typewriters, so there's a caps lock key on the computer keyboards as well. And yeah, sometimes we might need to type in all caps. Mm, arguably, but well, might be the case. Caps lock is a mode. The whole keyboard is changed when you press caps lock, right? It's not one time thing, it's just the whole thing. Imagine where the caps lock key is. It's right next to the shift key. And then, like, this is the shift, this is the caps lock. And it's very easy to hit the caps lock key. I do it like at least 10 times a day instead of shift, I hit the caps lock. <coughs> and the biggest problem comes when you enter passwords. Because there you don't see what you're typing, you just see asterisks. And, well, designers have invented uh, ways to, to show you, yeah, caps lock is on, caps lock is there. Well, I challenge you to, to think of uh, designs that uh, fix the caps lock problem. You may come up to me, Twitter, send me an email with your ideas. Think about it. Okay. Now, after I've told you the types of messages, shown you what kind of, the variety of messages that there is, exist there, I want to give you some pieces of advice of what to do, what not to do. Try to avoid messages. That's the whole thing. For example, your password can't be longer than 16 characters. Why not? Reconsider the limitations or make them bigger. Make that limitation 100 characters. Nobody will hit that. But 16, that, that happens. Uh, again, parse the user input instead of showing a message. Remember the credit card? Or dates? Parsing dates is pretty easy. Or when it, uh, in terms of dates, you can use different UIs. Instead of showing a box, you can give a calendar picker, which will eliminate most of the mistakes. Spare the technical details. Users don't care how the programs work. Well, when I say don't care, it's like 99% of the time. There are users who do care, who are interested, but these are separate cases. Main, main case, users don't care. Here's an example. Now that it says, well, we found search results, but we will not show them here because you're in a special mode. Go someplace else and perform <laughs> the same search to see the results. This is telling me how the program works. This is telling me now we have two modes or two modules and in this module something happens and in this one something else happens. I don't care as a user. I'm searching for something, show it to me. Model messages, last resort. Now you, you all know model message, right? It blocks everything behind that. So show model messages when, only when you don't have any idea what else to do. Uh, you have no time. I know that the model message showing model message is very easy. It's just, uh, just there in the code and the type message must be whatever you type and it's there. Uh, it might be very practical to show a model message. Yeah, it might make a business case. Uh, otherwise, uh, to write the model message it might take you five minutes. Otherwise, it might take you two days. So it's business-wise clever to use a model message. And especially if it will never show to users, why not write a model message, that's okay. But be aware, I have this axiom. So any internal message, there are many of these that are not supposed to, sh to show to users. All of these messages find a way to show to users. So there are no such messages that are internal and that nobody will see. Coordinate text and closing. Now, this is a, something will happen. Avoid the necessary. So, this is a warning message, right? And now, what, what am I supposed to click here? OK, cancel. What happens if I click OK? What happens if I click cancel? So, not coordinated what the message says and what the, the closing <coughs> suggests. Now, this is better. Remember, it just says continue. Oh, OK, 
That's that's nice. Keep them short. No, we don't want to read messages. We don't want to waste time. We want to do work or enjoy our lives. We do whatever, but not read messages. So be short, be brief, yet be um, thorough. We don't want to guess what's going on. She saw many examples of this. Now, frame messages positive. It's much better to speak to somebody in a positive way than a negative way. So this is an example. You have only view permissions. It says, uh huh. Instead of, you do not have edit permissions. When you, we humans are such interesting beings that when somebody talk to us in a negative way, we become, oh, no, that can't be the truth. I don't know, I should find a way to have edit permissions. So positive framing is good. Don't try to be funny, please. And <laughs> when I encounter a message, I, it's not funny to me. I am trying to do something and it says, now oh, the browser is dead. Now oh, he's dead, Jim. Who's Jim? Why is he dead? That's not. <laughs> now that might be might be good, might be interesting as a first time thing, one time thing, but if this happens a lot, we're not happy with that, people. Um, ask for help. Have a reviewer. Yeah, your colleague next desk, or a technical writer. Why are you laughing? <laughs> Oh, the spelling mistakes. <laughs> of course, it's better to have them found internally than users to see and laugh at you. Okay, test with users. Yes, even messages can be tested with users. I, I had once somebody told me, I, I wasn't able to find it, uh, the reference to that, but, uh, uh, and it was back in the days, like 1970 or something like that, and it's all text interfaces. And they are preparing some system, and they tested the message with uh, with those users, and they made like thirty something iterations until they got it right. Oh well, yes, it, it's good; it pays off. You can do that. Uh, so what I wanted to take home: <coughs> three things: avoid messages, especially uh, these model pop-ups. Instead of writing messages, oh. Okay, if you have to give that message, make sure that it's obvious that some, who, who, who gives that message, which program it is. And ah, my sequence is not the right, yeah. Okay, so my main message to you is don't write messages, design interactions. Instead of just throwing a message, think what's happening. Why is it happening this way? What is this user supposed to do now? What is he trying to achieve? Aha, uh -huh, so. This is how it should go. Instead of just, ah, no, this, the file is not there. Now let's get back to, if you have to give a message, who shows it, what happened, or what did not, or what will happen, <coughs> why this is happening or not happening, and what users can do about it. And third, be practical. Forget everything that I told you and do whatever makes sense at, uh, for the specific case. Okay. And I have a bonus for you. Best message ever. Nah, haven't seen such a message, right? Are you with me? <laughs> okay. <laughs> It's a good one, isn't it? <laughs> I, I'm serious. This is an excellent message. Well, this is in English. Fishing permitted. Right? Cop. <laughs> Why is this a good message? Now, here's it. This is non-ambiguous. It's very clear what it means. Yeah? You can go fish for three level per kilo carp. That's it. Language. Good <laughs> yes. Those people who live in that area, they know what this means, right? No excessive info. That's it. You don't say it's the most beautiful carp ever. No, just the point. 
there's a substantial information that's necessary, right? I'm interested. I, I want to know how much do you charge them? Three leva. Okay, I can go. There's direction. <laughs> go that way, <laughs> right? Big font, large font. The contrast is pretty good. There's these white letters on, on brownish background. That's good as well. You can read it from the car in daytime. At night, maybe not that good. I haven't seen a picture at night. Unobtrusive. It's just there. It's not like those big billboards with uh, beautiful women and you're driving in, in Sofia and you're looking at them. And <laughs> <laughs> Click something. <coughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, guys, I, I'm ready to take questions. We have like three or four more minutes. Okay, I have a question. Uh, how do you collect all these materials? Can you send such materials to you somehow? Twitter, mails, Facebook? I do collect messages. I've been doing this for the last like 10 years, probably. Uh, yeah, it's been always on my mind. I should put the website with this, some, do something. I haven't found time to do it. Yes, if you have uh, examples of those, send them over. I'll be more than happy to take them. And maybe someday I will put up a website and uh, have them there. And there was a question here. Yeah. I don't know, but <coughs> you have to tell users whatever makes sense for them to complete their job. If it's not allowed to tell them that the username that they entered does not exist in the database, because this is security violation, right? As I'm trying and I'm, I'm guessing, you don't tell them that. You tell them the username and password combination do not match. You don't know what's wrong, right? Could be one of these. So there is ways to work around those. Okay, other questions? Then, thank you.